So sustainable energy is something that we have been talking about. I recently did a video on Cube Green where I explained about Cube Green, some of the sustainability concepts and how you can use Cube Green to scale down your deployment to zero in non-working hours. In this video, we'll be discussing about another project called Kepler and how you can use that to actually measure the energy consumption by the pods. Yes, you can measure that and we'll be discussing all about it today. So welcome to Cube Simplify. My name is Sayam Bardag and let's get started. Now before starting, this video is brought to you by Cisco Commodore Sysdix Slim AI. They are my org members that helps me in creating these videos for you. So make sure to check them out. Links are in the description and let's get started with the video now. So coming to Kepler, Kepler, first of all, yes, it is a CNCF project and it is under the sustainable computing GitHub organization that I'll show you. What it means is it is a Kubernetes based efficient power level exporter and it uses eBPF under the hood, very powerful technology. When we talked about ground cover, I briefly touched upon eBPF. So eBPF lets you run your programs, your own set of programs. I also discussed in the inspector gadget video. So it lets you run your own programs uh, in the kernel. The, it's a very superb technology and uh, that is what is also powering Kepler. After that, after collecting, you know, all the data and all that stuff from uh, the eBPF about the processes CPUs, which I'll be discussing in the, in the later section of this particular video, it is fed into the machine learning models, linear regression and stuff like that and getting the actual useful data, which is the actual metrics that is presentable and viewable so that you can actually see the energy consumption by the pods. And this metrics is by in the standard Prometheus format. Obviously, you can use the same format to view it in the dashboards as well, in the Grafana dashboards. So now everyone knows that in Kubernetes, we have pods, we have nodes. So this particular big box is the node. And these are the set of pods. And each of pod is having one or more containers. So everything that is running on a particular machine is actually contributing to the power consumption. So if you don't know, uh, the containers are actually the Linux processes. So in the end, it's, it is having a PID using all the Linux namespaces. It is a process which is there on a particular system, on a particular Linux system or whatever you are using, it will be there. So it's also a processes. So in the end, whatever you call it, like the processes, the containers, the pods, uh, so anything at the kernel level, which is running, you know, the CPU, RAM, GPU, SSD card, power supply, and all this stuff is contributing to the power consumption. Now, uh, let's talk a brief about power consumption because that is pretty important to understand how things are calculated at Linux level, at pods level, at processes level. So when we talk about power consumption in, in CPU world, and we'll not talk about how actually it is done. We'll talk about how the workarounds have been made to calculate the power consumption in terms of CPU and from the Linux system. In CPU, you have something which is called CPU instructions. Now here, we calculate the capacitance. Capacitance is nothing but the number of circuits which are running and the number of CPU instructions. In terms of frequency, frequencies, every circuit frequency, obviously we cannot calculate that. But how do we do that is read from CPU counters like the A perf counter. So we need to measure the capacitance, the frequency. So number of circuits running and every circuit frequency, this we cannot do. So we calculate the number of CPU instructions, CPU cycles and read from the CPU counters. And also we have to calculate the execution time and execution time is actually the CPU cycles. So again, to just to recap, Kepler, that will be installed on a system. It will capture all the stats, all these stats which are there from using eBPF, feed into the machine learning model and get the energy estimates. So Kepler, basically there are three things, how, how it works is. So eBPF is used to gather the pod level energy. Yeah, Kepler can also get the metrics of VM and bare metal and it exposes it as Prometheus metric. So this is one layer. Then the next layer is it uses eBPF to read the consumption to get all the metrics. And the next layer is feeding into the machine learning model. So machine learning models will be there that will be using that metrics which is generated and then it will be processing it and get the meaningful result out of that. Let's look at the architecture also real quick. 
so collection of data so collection of data is via ebpf we have told this many times now and in the linux kernel it will be measuring all the processes the cpu cycle instruction pids all that stuff and then it goes to the next layer so in the next layer you have the aggregation so here you will be having you know all set of metrics that can be calculated for example for linux systems you will be having you know x86 stuff you will be having rapl which is the running average power limit and this particular thing exposes the energy counter performance counter that matches actual power measurements so you can it, it actually allows you to do multiple stuffs like setting the power limits on the processor dram processor and the dram expose the performance feedback and all that stuff is done by rap uh, for the gpus it's nvml which stands for nvidia management library it is also uh, sdk that is installed and it gives you information about the gpu hardware performance metrics control power management settings and all the other stuffs then you have c group fs uh, for the c groups and then you have hw mon which is hardware monitoring support that lets you monitor the hardware health of the system so you can it includes the temperature sensors it actually is a collection of all these so it it will be having the temperature sensors voltage center speed sensors all those stuff which is there so next all the energy is getting calculated and then it is fed to the model server once it gets to the model server it will be exposing it as the prometheus format matrix which with which you will be able to see the graphs the actual energy consumption from the pods so kepler in short gives you the actual energy consumption by the pods now the the matrix is actually twice because what it does is kepler first use ebpf expose the matrix then the model server takes this matrix it does all its like in the machine learning algorithms whatever it is using then again it exposes the matrix to kepler by the prometheus format and then it is being used by grafana dashboards and stuff to get a good visualization in cpu you have energy time frequency for gpu you have energy resident memory size for memory you have cache memory and resident memory size for block divide devices you have read and write operations so you can see here also uh, you have first ebpf programs so ebpf programs is attaches to the trace points and the perf counters gathers all the metrics on the performance counters gather is a process name container id perf stat counters and everything and the energy stats reader so there this is the aggregation layer that we were talking about so it is having rapl hardware monitor sensor if there are gpus gpu enabled then nvml all that stuff and then it is uh, having the prometheus exporter also you have online machine learning model server so this model server is pretty important because it uses the same metrics uh, get the energy estimate model so get the energy estimates on the metrics that it has gathered from the prometheus that kepler has given it and then again it you makes provide the uh, useful metrics so that you will be able to actually see that so that's in short what kepler is uh, now actually to understand all the stuff that we have just seen um, you know let's see in action like how the kubernetes stuck, uh, cluster it looks like how it is deployed and how it gathers the metrics and how the actual metrics look like so just before that uh, we have already seen this particular diagram i want to emphasize more on the model server and how it works you know the major components obviously is the kepler exporter that you have seen exposes a variety of metrics with respect to kubernetes components pods and nodes uh, then you have the model server and model server uh, main feature is to return a power estimator model corresponding to the request now what is this uh, power estimator model and what is this kepler estimator sidecar so let's go through it and understand different set of architectures that can be deployed using uh, the estimator so there are two type of estimators in kepler there is a power estimator solution obviously this is the thing that is actually getting uh, you know the metrics so one is the local linear regression estimator this estimator estimates the power using the trained weights multiplied by the normalized value of the usage matrix just like the regular li linear regression model then is the general estimator sidecar this estimator transforms the usage matrix applies with trained models that can be any regression model from the scikit learn library or the neuron network skiria tensor flow and that different set of models can be used and then there are a uh, model server component as well which is the online model so first this particular set of metric which is there this is the uh, minimum deployment so in minimum deployment you can see there will be a daemon set in the daemon pod you'll be having local regression estimator and it will be uh, loading the initial model weights using the offline models 
So that's the first kind of deployment. Then to you can enable the general estimator, general estimator sidecar. So here you'll be having a Kepler estimator, which will be a sidecar deployed in the daemon pod and it will be sending the usage and it will be using here what extra thing you can use is you can use different set of uh, models so you can use more uh, models increasing the accuracy next is to get updated weights and uh, better accuracy you can also connect it to remote kepler model server that performs online training of data with the power measuring tool so here you can see you will be having kepler daemon pod and then subscribe it to the Kepler model server. It is having us its server of its own online models, even offline models are there and online trainer. So it is also getting trained and then it is getting uh, the online models and then it is even doing more inferencing on that. Then is the full deployment. So in the full deployment, what happens is you have both the sidecar pattern also enabled and the Kepler model server also deployed. So you have a Kepler daemon pod with Kepler, the main pod, uh, the main container which is there and the sidecar container, the Kepler general estimator and you will be having the Kepler model server which is there that is getting online trained using the metrics generated by the daemon pod as well. So just wanted to show you the four different types of uh, deployment scenarios over here. So this is how the Kepler metrics uh, looks like. Obviously, we'll be seeing what it is. But like the Kepler container joules total. So it's a counter metric. This is a matrix is aggregated socket energy consumption of the CPU, DRAM, GPUs and other host components. Then you have container core joules total. It is the measurement of total energy consumption on the CPU cores that a certain container has used. And then you have DRAM joules, uh, uncore joules, GPU total joules, energy stat. So this is the total stat. The metrics contains several container metrics labeled with container resource utilization C group metrics that are used in the model server for predictions. So that was the Kepler metrics for container energy consumption. This is the container metrics for resource utilization where it calculates the CPU cycles, the CPU instructions, uh, the cache miss, memory. And then you have the node metrics, node energy metrics and all that stuff. So you can read all the detailed metrics which is there, uh, how it calculates and what all it exposes as a name in the Prometheus format that you will be able to search even in the Prometheus dashboard. And when you also uh, write the queries and get imported in the Grafana dashboard, but we'll be using that uh, in an automated created, you know, dashboard which is there. So how do we deploy this particular thing? So first I'm having a cluster kubectl get nodes. You can see the cluster is up and running. So this is a brand new cluster which is there. And first of all, what we'll be doing is we need to install the Prometheus operator. For this, I already have a repository, Cube Prometheus repository, which is cloned. And I already have generated this particular Grafana dashboard. This is just basically uh, in pre-installing the Kepler Grafana dashboard bundled with Cube Prometheus. So it is just that. And we'll just do the installations now. This will take a bit of time because it is installing all the custom resource definition, uh, the Prometheus components, the Grafana components, all the service account, manifest, services, everything will be installed here uh, with a complete Prometheus Grafana setup and the Kepler specific dashboards as well. Once you have everything ready, you can do cube CDL get pods hyphen A. And you'll be able to see everything up and running, the node exporter, Grafana and all the other pods which are there. Now it's time to install Kepler. So to install Kepler, it's pretty simple. What you need to do is you need to git clone the Kepler repository, build the manifest as per the options. We'll be using the Prometheus deploy option. Uh, I already have generated the manifest. So I'll be just copying this particular file. You can see all the other options here. So if you see like Prometheus deploy options will create the manifest with the patching, the labels of the Prometheus related resources. And there are other set of uh, options as well like the estimator sidecar deploy if you want to do that the model server deploy if you want to do that like I showed you the four different type of deployment models which are there so let's do the deployment of Kepler so as you can see it has created bunch of resources like the namespace service account role role binding and an all main thing is the daemon set which has been created so if I do kubectl get ports hyphen a I'll be able to see the Kepler pods in container creating state. And all the pods are running now. We should be having 
uh, the metrics getting exported and all that stuff, how we can check is using Grafana. And as you can see, we can port forward the Grafana service. So let's do that. Now let's hit localhost 3000. It's opening Grafana. Admin, admin. A new password can be just dummy123. And we are in the Grafana. So we'll be seeing the Kepler metrics dashboard which is there and we can already see the metrics that is flowing in. So this is the dashboard. It shows you the coal, petroleum, natural gas, the carbon footprint uh, per kilowatt per day in the namespace, like in every namespace of all the pods. You can filter it by namespace. You can filter it by pods. You can filter it by the data sources of the Prometheus. Uh, but for the namespace also, if I just do Kepler, I'll be able to see only the uh, Kepler resource utilizations. In the resource utilization and the power consumption, we'll be able to see how much the resource consumption is there in the namespace Kepler. And you can see the DRAM, other metrics over here. You can also zoom in to certain timestamps to even get more insights from this. This is per pod, which is there, how much they are using and total power consumption, how much they are using. And this is the PKG plus DRAM. This is in watts, power consumption, this is kilowatt per hour. So different levels of metrics that are there. And if you want to read about all set of metrics, then I already showed you where it is there in the design section, Kepler metrics. So that's how you will be able to install Kepler, use Kepler, get the Prometheus exported, patch it, patch the resources, run through some of the options which are there. There are certain number of projects which are associated with Kepler, which I'll be diving into next set of videos. But for this, at least you know how to calculate your energy consumptions per pod per namespace using Kepler, uh, using eBPF, that is getting tracing the metrics, generating it Prometheus, and then uh, the machine learning models which are there offline or online, it will be processing it and give you, giving you the meaningful energy consumption metrics that you will be able to see in the Grafana dashboards like you just saw a couple of minutes ago. So I hope this video was useful. I think sustainability energy is pretty, uh, you know, interesting topic and we should be doing whatever we can in our power to visualize all the stuff, how we are using the metrics and how we are impacting the environment and then try to minimize using certain tools like Cube, Green and definitely we'll be exploring more set of tools, practices, uh, you know, in this particular sustainability series. I'm also looking out for some of the speakers uh, because we wanted to do a small conference with respect to SIG sustainability. Uh, so wanted to look out for speakers who are actually implementing some of the tooling, some of the practices to capture all these metrics and, you know, uh, what they are doing with respect to the environment sustainability of the workloads that they are running in the cloud native ecosystem. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, then please do drop a like, comment on whatever you are using it and share as much as you can. Yes, subscribing makes me feel motivated to do more and more stuff. Uh, thank you for watching till the end. And again, thank you so much to the org members, Cisco, Commodore, Sysdig and Slim AI who are the org members and because of which I'm able to bring videos. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.